On this episode, we do mock-ups. We have progress, we have regressions, and we talk a little tech. Stand by. All right, so I have the axle mocked up here, and I think this is gonna wind up being the, uh, I think this is gonna be the solution. I'll be honest, I'm not crazy about how high up the axle is above the ground, but I think for all practical reasons, it's gonna actually work out the best. I think I'm gonna have more advantages than disadvantages. So, but that's gonna force me to do a couple of things. So first, the steering is going to still be the same as it was in the last iteration. Um, it's going to come up underneath the axle, so it will more or less be the lowest... Well, I say that. At the moment, sort of the lowest component. Yeah, it probably still will be. But what I think I'm going to do... is notch out the frame, find some sort of pipe that's a larger diameter, and then I will section, I will cut out, and sort of, it'll be a reverse sleeve, if you will. Um, so that way this shaft can go tuck a little further up, you know, I don't know exactly how many more inches I'll get. Um, it's one by one, so, you know, maybe another three quarters of an inch, so then, you know, whatever diameter this is, it'll probably be, you know, I might be a half inch lower than in the frame rails so so we do that let's try to get this kind of back on there mm, yeah it's fairly well centered so we do that but again you see the holes um, I think I'm gonna wind up so either I'm gonna fabricate like a kind of triangular piece that's gonna just be flat stock to hit this this gap gap with the material in between the holes or I'm gonna like taper off the frame or I'll taper off the frame down here at the bottom somehow I think you know maybe cut the bottom kind of boat tail it up um, and then just have it die into somewhere in there The other thing I'm going to be fighting, and again, remember, this piece is going to be down here. Which, now that I think about it, I could probably cut these things up and reuse. Anyway, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll think about that later. Um, I will still have, you know, linkage mounts up here. Now, I think these are going to get a lot shorter than what they currently are. But, as you can see, having the motor here... Um, I need to figure that out, what what exactly, what amount of material do I need, um, so that so that the linkage behind clears the motor. So, we got a couple things to, to fight, and then in a couple episodes ago I mentioned I wanted to do a torque averter, so I think I need to buy that first, so I can mount it to this guy. I can solidly mount the motor in place, and then that's gonna still help me uh, locate my my axle, because it, it may want to or may need to come out further this direction. All right, so here's another reason why I think I'm gonna wait the torque converter in. You can see I sort of have it mocked up as, here's what full lock, but anyway, that's why you mock it up, right? So you can think through these things, and uh, you know, part of me is tempted to cut these loose and move them up because I think it'd look cooler if the axle was lower and that the steering linkage would come through the center hole, but this just makes too much sense. It's just dimensionally all looks good as a composition. So I think I'm just gonna live with the axle being a little higher. Like I don't hate it. I just think it would look, I think it looks cooler if the axle was lower to the ground like my last iteration, but that's what, that's what it looks like there. So, I don't know, again, like I said, don't hate it, just think lower would look even better. 
All right, so I've come in here and I've scribed a 45 degree angle here because what I'm going to do is get my Dremel out and I'm going to make a relief cut so I can kind of bend this over and hopefully close this gap a little bit before I weld that. Okay, so drawback of making that relief cut and pounding in the, uh, the top flange of the I-beam axle was Last night I got a little carried away and we had a casualty and busted through the tack welds. So I'm going to have to re-tack the other side, which is a shame because I felt like I had a pretty good, um, even though I let myself sort of eyeball some stuff, um, I was actually really surprised how close um, one side was to the other. And I uh, was really happy with, with the results of the tack welding. So, anyway, we are, well, I'll get that fixed here. Um, it's Wednesday night, this go around. However, the primary uh, objective tonight is uh, cutting up a notch for the steering uh, in the frame. So, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to cut a section out so we can tuck that up a little tighter. So let's get going on that. So by luck, the piece I cut out actually slides back up into the tube really nice. So I'm going to weld that in. Stick weld probably just because I've got a sizable gap here. Um, other side, tighter. But uh, as it gets, as it heats up to, um, I'll try to, try to bend this a little bit. But, but yeah, it turned out nice. Um, this is going to slide. Up in there, real nice. I gained about half an inch clearance. So that's good, it's gonna help me out. Again, I'm gonna wait till I get the torque converter before I make final decisions on where that axle lands. Um, I did, tonight, do a little research on this. I know this episode probably isn't as cohesive as I'd like it to be, but I, I'm going to close down today uh, talking a little tech. Um, first off, I got some parts coming this, hopefully this week, for the Rat Rod Radio Flyer to help me get back on that, speed that up. Hope you enjoyed watching me notch the notch for the steering part, but um, because I'm doing more TIG welding now, um, what I noticed was my old welding hood. It was getting still pretty bright sometimes when I was TIG welding. Um, and, you know, as cool as my front axle is on my Rat Rod Radio Flyer, it's still not cool enough uh, to lose my eyesight. I've been blessed with, I still to this day don't wear any corrective lenses or glasses. Um, I have perfect 20-20 vision and it's a resource that I'm not gonna mess around with. Um, I'd say maybe less than a dozen, maybe a little more than half a dozen times it's gotten to that point with this welding helmet where it's just been too bright and I usually stop immediately but again it's um yeah my eyesight's worth whatever I spent well upon further review this was a uh, a purchase years ago 
you know, when I started welding, I was stick welding. This was a purchase years ago from Tractor Supply. It's a Hobart brand auto darkening helmet. And um, works great. It's fantastic. But it's a fixed shade uh, helmet. And so, you know, I'm figuring all this out uh, probably the wrong way uh, through experience, through looking through this. Um, and so what I found is, is there's a range. It's like from 9 to 13 or 8 to 13, I think it is, of um, darkening shade. And when you're getting higher up there in the amps for a process like TIG welding, um, like I have been up in the 170, 180 uh, range, and someday I'll probably be up to 200. Um, you want to be in the 11, 12, 13 range. And so this guide is, is fixed at number 10. Whereas over here, I've got the ability to adjust it from 8 to 13. And I've even got the ability to go from 3 to 8 for, for things like grinding. So um, I bought this off of Amazon. It is Tack Life brand. They gave me this cool um, sort of bag, which is cool, so a protective bag. So I can, when I'm not using it, I can protect it here out in my garage because I don't really have a great place to store it. I just changed the lens out on this. Um, so I, I don't know what I'll be doing with this. I might be giving this away. Um, so if anybody's interested, let me know. Again, it's fixed at number 10, but it's it's a pretty good general purpose hood. Um, but anyway, I just thought it's uh, worth doing a public service announcement kind of thing. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube talking about the same subject. Um, it's a lesson I sort of was learning the hard way, I suppose. But I'm, I'm glad I forced myself to kind of just shut shut the process down until I got this. Um, I, guess it's, I guess it's a sign of growth and maturity and getting older. Um, again, reminder, if you like my shirts, you can... Click the link below to my Spreadshirt store. Pick up one of your own Pistons tee. They come in black or white, whichever one you like. So remember, you can always purchase through that. It's going to do it for this week's show. I hope to have a parts haul for you guys uh, next week. And Again, I, we'll see how much time I have because I'll be traveling out of town for Easter. But I hope to have footage shot and recorded and edited. And I can schedule that upload for that will be Easter Sunday night. I certainly probably won't be doing any of that stuff on Easter Sunday night. Um, so hopefully I can maintain the schedule, uh, stay a little bit out in front. But until next time, peace out.